Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Sports Science. Today, we'll be looking at one of the most physical games, hockey. What makes hockey such an exciting sport are the big hits, which can really work up fans. On average, there are around 40 to 50 hits in an NHL game. Especially when the average defenseman is 6 foot 2 and 210 pounds, big hits can really change the momentum of the game and boost morale. We'll be analyzing a hockey player's worst fear, an unexpected hit on open ice. These hits often lead to major injuries, and most often of all, concussions. Let's take a look at the hit we'll be examining today. It happened in Game 7 of the Eastern Conference Finals in the year 2000 where the New Jersey Devils were pitted against the Philadelphia Flyers. Eric Lindros had undoubtedly led to the Flyers to that point, producing as a former number one overall pick should. Scott Stevens over here had played a huge role throughout his career as a Devil, and specifically when the Devils had won the Stanley Cup five years earlier. There, his role was seen through a hit similar to this one that he committed on Slava Kozlov of the Detroit Red Wings. Let's see what Stevens does to Lindros in this video. Turnover at center. Here's 88. Lindros makes the move. And Lindros oh! is hammered down on the ice by Scott Stevens. If the maximum speed of a hockey player on ice is 30 miles per hour, then we'll assume Lindros is almost there, or at about 25 miles per hour. And Stevens, since he is sizing up how he's going to hit Lindros, and isn't much of a speedster to begin with, is going slower, so let's say he was going about 10 miles per hour. Since Steven's hit was directly to Lindros's head, we'll take into account both of their speeds as well as Steven's weight and the weight of Lindros's head. From the calculations we performed, we can see that the amount of energy produced from the collision is equal to 690 joules. This collision produces enough energy to shoot a hockey puck 6,886 feet at a speed of 142 miles per hour or to light a 60 watt light bulb for 11 seconds. The stopping force is 47 pounds of force, meaning that 47 pounds of force were applied to Lindros's head. The final velocity of Lindros's head after the hit is 7.6 miles per hour. To put this into perspective, the average speed of a New York City bus is 6 to 7 miles per hour. What causes a concussion? The brain is a three pound organ that floats in cerebral spinal fluid inside the skull. The cerebral spinal fluid acts as a shock absorber for minor impacts. A concussion occurs when the head is hit and accelerates. The acceleration causes the brain to hit the inner skull and the deceleration of the head causes the brain to hit the other side of the inner skull. What are the dangers of a concussion? Well, if a player receives a concussion, he is one to two times more likely to receive a second concussion. If they've had two concussions, they are two to four times more likely to receive a third one. And after three concussions, they are three to nine times more likely to receive a fourth concussion. So, as you can see, after the first concussion, a player becomes more vulnerable to more concussions, which spirals into even more concussions. What are the symptoms of a concussion? Um, some symptoms could be lightheaded, uh, sensitivity to light, uh, constant headaches, um, loss of balance. Um, you always have to try to um, look at the pupils of a player or an athlete who has received a blow to the head to see where their, where their eyes are. How long should an athlete refrain from playing following a concussion? Um, as I said before, there's really no set timetable. Each person is different. Um, you have to work your way up from you know going to school and going back on the court, putting pads on for whatever particular sport you are uh, participating in. Uh, so I can't say that there is a timetable. It could take anywhere from two weeks to two years to recover from a concussion. How did this impact Eric Lindros' career? Lindros' concussion as a result of Steven's hit was not his first concussion. His first concussion was in 1998, and in the two years following, he would miss games on five separate occasions due to concussions. Steven's hit on Lindros is the most memorable of Lindros' concussions due to the way he was knocked senseless to the ice. His career was effectively derailed by these various concussions, with the one coming from this hit being the most severe. Due to his issues with concussions, in the 2001 offseason, he was traded from an annual contender, the Philadelphia Flyers, to the declining New York Rangers, who did not make the playoffs through his concussion-filled tenure at the team. He was then again traded due to his injury problems to the Toronto Maple Leafs, where his career was finally ended with a ninth concussion. 